What's up, NHL fans? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Morning Cup of Hockey alongside Kobe Cohen. I'm Johnny Lazarus, and we are presented by Betway. If you're going to place a bet, bet on Betway. Please play responsibly. You must be 19 years of age or older. We got a great show for you today. Friend of the show, Frank Saravalli, NHL insider, will be joining us. And I say friend of the show because Kobe hates when I say my friend or our friend. It's Kobe's friend just to make it clear. So we're going to talk to him about the GM <laughs> meetings yesterday. Then we're going to talk about Alexander Ovechkin and his goals last night, and we'll get into some of the games tonight. And we may have to have a sit down with our producer, Vic, because he is one bad gambler. Uh, he's had some really bad luck <laughs> the past couple weeks. But a uh, great show today coming up. Colby, you already got some that looks like uh, on your I, mind. I, I just want, I don't hate when you say that. I just want <laughs> you to choose your fr- your words more wisely because you call everybody your friend people you just met and then how do you think that makes your real friends feel like if you're calling someone you just met your friend Mm -hmm. but you have a friend that you've known for a long time what like there's got to be some distinction you know what actually is funny my like oldest friends you make people feel like they're not important because you just call everybody your friend people who don't even know you my oldest friends also do give me a lot of shit, mostly like my high school friends. Um, actually, this weekend, like my birthday is on Friday and, and we have plans like next weekend to get together, the high school friends. And um, one of my friends made like a reservation at this like bar in the city. And he already said, like, how many other people did you invite already? Like, are we not good enough? Like, I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm a friendly guy, man. It's just good to use. You want to you want to choose your words more wisely and this way. They have more weight. I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm working on, I, I no, want you to have more credibility when you call someone your friend. It's actually something I've been told before. Um, like even just throwing around the word love, you know, I'll, I'll tell my friend, love you, dude. And he'll be like, what? <laughs> you know? Uh, so thanks for the early lesson in today's show. But uh, any thoughts on the action in the NHL last night? I mean, uh, two big wins for Washington, for Buffalo. And Vic just said he loves me. So that's so nice to hear, Vic. I love you too. Um, but the Capitals look good against Calgary. Buffalo. I know Jer- I know Jeremiah had to be celebrating last night. Um, and look, the, the Caps wake up this morning uh, in a playoff position. I mean, not only do they wake up in a playoff position, mm-hmm. but, you know, Alexander Ovechkin, he, he continues to score goals. Um, and... You know, he people were counting him out. They were they were completely casting Ovi out as oh, he's actually not gonna catch Gretzky. This is gonna take way too long. They're gonna people were saying they're gonna march him out there in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, like I personally have never wavered from the fact that I'm saying Ovi's breaking that record. Like mm-hmm. I've never wavered from thinking that. And he's gonna score 25 goals this year, especially now that he can smell blood in the water for this Washington Capitals team. And they're in a playoff spot. Um, and and yes, yesterday we read the gauntlet of their schedule. Um, but man, Max Pacioretty continues to look better and better, which you'd expect. You know, the guy missed a shitload of time. Um, and he's starting to really fit in on that power play. TJ Oshie, you know, the best bumper man distributor there is, you know, probably in that role on the power play. He's been great. Yesterday on Delhi Faceoff Live, John Goyens, you know, former head coach in the, you know, the Quebec Major Junior League for a couple of different teams, he did this breakdown about what's been making their power play so good. And, you know, they've kind of changed the movement around on their power play. Like Ovi, yeah, he's scoring from his like vintage Ovi spot, but he's mm-hmm. also rolling up around the top. He's moving into other lanes. There's a lot more movement around the top of that power play, which is reopening that scene to Ovechkin. And it's just funny to me how teams know it's coming. Goalies know it's coming, Johnny. And they still can't do shit about um, Alexander Ovechkin's one-timer. Like, nobody can do that like him since, what, Brett Hall, basically? I mean, it's incredible yeah. what he continues to do. He took one stride before that power play goal yesterday. Like, literally one stride. He's standing still and no one's covering him, which was the Well, crazy. but I would disagree with that because what? he is moving, like, a few feet. He does move a couple of feet. But there's no day. one on him. No, I understand that. But you can't, you can't take that away. Mm-hmm. Um, you really can't. And look, I, I want to address what Jeremiah is talking about with his sticks really quick. 
we'll we'll get there in a second. But first, I I want to say this. Um, I played that side on on the power play most of my career. Right? Clearly, not comparing us. Even yeah. In the same <laughs> Thank world, God you referenced it. Right, okay. In, in the yeah. same world of a realm of the universe. But mm -hmm. having played in that spot to be successful there, you don't need to move a lot. You really don't because he's not afraid to get outside of the shooting lane. Like a lot of times he's outside the dots mm -hmm. when he actually, I think he lets, scored from outside the dots yesterday lets as well. That trigger go, but moving like a foot left, a foot, right, a foot up, a foot back. While it doesn't look like he's moving, he is kind of analyzing where the angle is and where the shot blocker is. So to your comment, yeah, he's not skating big circles, but he yeah. is moving just in and out enough in order to create that shooting angle. So I think Frank Saravalli has joined us here. So we'll patch Frank in and, and um, oh. Frank, good to see you. I like the tan. You're, you're coming in live from Fort Lauderdale, right? Yep. Uh, GM meetings here. I was a little late getting in some plane trouble Sunday and yesterday. So a little bit of planes, trains and automobiles, but uh, I have arrived. I introduced right. you as my best friend as we started the show today, Frank. Just wanted to get your thoughts. And on then that. I had to give him a whole <laughs> lecture on why he needs to choose his words more <laughs> wisely. And then we realized why Johnny doesn't have any friends. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot, lot of support. A lot of social lot of media in the friends. Yeah. Friends. What was that? What was that? I don't I know. Kobe no got balloons. <laughs> I have no idea why my computer does that. Okay. If uh, I put my thumb up, it will start doing thumbs up. There's got to be a setting on my Come computer. Come on, do it. Do it. No way. Let's see if it so, works. Oh, my see? God. <laughs> I have no idea why my computer does this. That's hilarious. All right. I'm putting my hands yeah. on the desk. Go ahead, Johnny. Let's yeah. talk to Frank about the GM meetings. Obviously, you know, he's got a front row seat to, to what's going on there. Well, before we actually get into the specifics, I'm curious as to why the GM meetings happen this time of year. Because I, I did overhear them saying yesterday that they were talking about rules that could be implied for this year's playoffs. It seems like that's a bit, you know, odd. No, that's the timing of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, unless there's something that I missed yesterday, I don't think that that's a possibility in terms of, mm -hmm. um, an actual direct rule change for this year. Typically what they do here is have a conversation about it. Ultimately they'll take a vote one way or the other, or they'll table it to a later meeting. And then typically that would get addressed by um, the competition committee or someone else in the summer before anything would be formally instituted for next season. So that's usually the process, but Mm -hmm. Again, I, I did reference off the top. I wasn't here yeah. yesterday, so I, I might have missed something. So mm -hmm. let me just ask you about like the flow building off that a little bit, Frank. So they get into a session. I assume they're closed door sh sessions, correct? Yeah. So actually yesterday, what they did is they split the 32 GMs off into groups. It was either three or four different groups and they call them breakout sessions, so to speak. And in those rooms, the eight or so GMs, they basically talk about some different issues that have popped up. So in one of the breakout rooms yesterday, I had talked to one of the managers who said, hey, today we talked about uh, face off, you know, uh, managing face offs and, you know, improperly dropped face offs mm -hmm. or face off infractions. We talked about the Department of Player Safety and Supplemental Discipline and we also talked about reverse hits. So like it's pretty straightforward in the sense that it's a real direct topic that you're talking about. And then so what they'll do is they'll then take those groups and then bring them all back together um, in today's meeting, a larger meeting, I think, with all 32 GMs. And then they're going to just basically bring forward whatever warranted more discussion and I believe at least in, in terms of the topics that were discussed in that group yesterday, they all said, hey, for the most part, there's little things that we don't like about it. But we, you know, overall, we think where we're at right now is the best that it's going to be. And so they don't recommend any changes. And then therefore, it probably doesn't become a larger discussion point with the whole group. I'm actually curious which topic that you just mentioned has sparked your interest the most, you know, out of the ones you like for me, actually, like, I didn't even know that they discussed the reverse hits. And I'm actually really curious to hear what they said about that. 
Yeah, I, I didn't get into a lot of the detail. Um, mm -hmm. I think they had mostly came to the the conclusion that the way reverse hits are being called are is is fine, and that um, they don't see any significant or increased danger to players. Although they seem to be some of the most devastating hits that you can throw. Well, the One thing that I would, injury I think about with the reverse hit. That's why I wonder if it, if it was sparked more. Yeah, and by the way, uh, good to see him back on the ice yeah. yesterday. Crazy, yeah. 40 days after uh, breaking both those bones and a gruesome, gruesome injury. Um, that was awesome to see, and it sort of makes you wonder Russian how gaps. deep would the, well, how, how deep would the Lightning need to play in order to get Sergachev back is an interesting question. Uh, mm -hmm. But with reverse hits, the one thing that comes up in my mind that I would ask about is, for the most part, even the best reverse hitter in the league, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, it's actually textbook interference because you're running into the player before he has a chance to get to the puck. How come that interference isn't called more often? We actually talked about that yesterday with uh, with Adam Fox on the power play breakout when a player is skating into him, I guess. It's somewhat different, but if a player has the puck, like I've seen actually... Kale McCarr was the first player I ever saw do this. Kale had the puck on his stick in college once and actually left the puck when a guy was going to hit him and reverse hit him and then took well, the puck and went on. You, you obviously never watched a guy by the name of Peter Forsberg play well, if you think Kale McCarr was the I was first too young to you remember Forsberg do doing I mean, it. Like Forsberg started doing this in the 90s, Johnny. So I was born um, in 96. If you <laughs> I mean, that. but Kale McCarr did not invent the reverse hit as much as you at you UMass freaks like to probably think so. Okay. Like, come on mm -hmm. here. I've known um, that Forsberg has done it. I've just never like watched it. All right. Well, look, like, let's not waste know. Frank's time here. We, he's got 20 minutes with us and then he's got to get over there to start talking to GMs and, and just to address you, Neil in the chat is Frank looking for a GM job. Um, we're, we're keeping Frank with DFO just as long as we can. I can confirm <laughs> as an insider that there have been teams that have 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 kicked that around at previous periods of the NHL because I think Frank would probably make a a, a pretty good front office executive but be, beyond no that interest. Frank beyond that you mentioned supplemental discipline does George Peros and his group have any role in these these GM meetings are they there are they doing presentations like what 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 role does supplemental discipline have at these GM meetings? Because that seems to be a hot button topic every year, and it seems to get the heat seems to go up every year. Like if last year was a six, this year's a seven. Next year's probably going to be an eight. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the most difficult job in the league, and probably by a wide margin. Because no matter what, for the most part both sides of every decision don't like you. And that includes fan bases, <laughs> players, front offices. I mean, one, one group is saying not enough. The other one's saying too much. And that doesn't mean that they get a pass. And so to answer your question, um, the department of player safety is here, multiple members of the department, and they do make a full on presentation with you know, slides and graphics and data and, and all sorts of information. And then they actually go through and they talk about how they arrived at certain decisions. And sometimes there's questions from managers about other hits that didn't receive more attention. And then there's other things that the Department of Player Safety asks of managers, essentially takes polls to say, hey, this is one hit that popped up that we clipped that maybe didn't receive a ton of attention. We want to get your thoughts on how you feel about this hit. Is this something that should warrant more discussion on our part or maybe discipline as well? I think the one big thing about the Department of Player Safety that's popped up this year seemingly more than others, which I always give those guys a ton of credit. Like They put in the time. They have the precedent. They're watching every game every night. They know the historical um precedent as i mentioned that comes with each hit and for the most part they've been spot on in terms of sticking to that i felt like this year was the first time that there was some deviation in that it was like you could see how come this one ended up being six games how come this one ended up being three 
And I think that's the one thing that not just drives fans crazy, but it also drives people that are in charge. And frankly, even players, we heard Sidney Crosby not all that long ago ask a similar question who normally doesn't say anything, basically saying, you could show me a hit and and I know it's going to be a suspension, but I can't pinpoint for you even after being in the game for so long, exactly how long this suspension is going to be. And I think that you never want it to be entirely predictable, but certainly more predictability I think would be appreciated by a lot of people. Well, that's the, the issue that the fans have, right? It's that consistency. Like Gallagher, gets a five game five game suspension for elbowing Rempe gets four now Kulikov gets two you know all for the same act basically right so I think that's the issue with the fans at least from what I hear is that lack of consistency like you should look at a hit and if it's the same kind of penalty should be the same kind of punishment I actually had a question with you I've seen a lot of and I doubt this was talked about but there I know there are a lot of fans who say if a player injures another player, that player should be suspended for as long as the player is injured. What are your thoughts? That's a ridiculous thing, right? It's totally ridiculous. And I think the idea of an eye for an eye. You can't control it. Yeah, you, you could see how you could get to that point. But what happens when there's a freak play that happens that is really through no fault of the player? Mm -hmm. Or what ha like take the, the first one of the first Rempy hits um, against New Jersey where a lot of people were calling for a suspension then because they felt like he had caught a player with his head down and made direct head contact when really it's just a guy that's that much bigger running into a guy that's that much smaller. What happens if that player has a concussion and is out three months for what we ultimately ended up deeming a clean hit? So mm -hmm. what now we're going to say that that player needs to miss three months while this player heals from a concussion. It, it can't happen. Um, and that's why it's a big reason why we won't ever see punishment that's handed out like that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm laughing right now. And someone in the chat, K Wadi said this, the variation in suspension times brought to you by Botano. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're, they're plugging our, our sponsors, which, which we, we, we absolutely love, um, to talk about. So, uh, a couple other things that I thought were, were kind of interesting coming out of the, um, the, the GM meetings, the quotes that we've seen all along with, uh, you know, the, the GM meetings is they're talking about, you know, three on three overtime. And, um, I saw yesterday they they're, they're probably not making any changes. We have a lot of people in the chat asking for a 10 minute overtime. Mm. My, my take on that is that the players association would never go for lengthening the game. That's just my take on it. Um, and I just think there's 82 games, five minute overtime, like that enough is enough. What do you think, Frank? And what are you hearing at the meetings? Like is the biggest sort of barrier to quote unquote fixing or changing overtime to kind of get it back to the excitement levels that it first brought, uh, when it was introduced. Well, first off, I would say, I don't think it needs fixing. Um, the NHL put out this stat yesterday and I thought it was interesting timing that we're on track for 70% of games that go to overtime to end in overtime this year, which is the highest total ever. Uh, so that's one data point. Thanks the to the, thing, the Islanders. <laughs> yeah. Well, the second <laughs> thing I would say is I've been advocating for increasing the length of overtime to 10 minutes, just on a statistical basis, because now that we know with expected goals for you're looking at it increasing to 10 minutes, something like 93% of games ending in overtime. And that's a huge jump from 70. So my goal is not to lengthen the game or make it longer. My goal is to reduce the number of games that get to shoot out because I think they're so anticlimactic. So the occasionally you get the decent shootout and it's an interesting way to end it. I always feel like, watching shootouts though like the losing team just kind of shrugs and they're like well at least we got a point and i just don't know that you should ever really feel that way getting off the ice unless you battled back from a three goal deficit in the third period it should just be like man we did all that work for nothing or we got two points and so you know i think there's a whole bunch of different ways to tackle the last part of what i'm saying like another thing i'd been advocating for is a three two one zero 
-hmm. points format, which interestingly enough, uh, they are using for the four nations face off in 2025 next season. Um, don't know how that'll impact the tournament, but I wonder if there's obviously part of it in such a short tournament is to not have any ties, but I wonder if in the back of the league's mind, is there any thought to maybe changing the point structure of the league? Well, college has done it. You know, Colby and I both know hockey East has pretty much done that, uh, that three point system as the last couple of years. And I, I think you have to um, get rid of that loser point, right? Because we're, we're looking at teams right now, uh, like the New York Islanders, the Boston Bruins, who I joked about before, but they've benefited so much from it and, and they've lost 14, 15 games and have gotten those points. Like, you know, I, I think, or you know what? I, I actually feel stronger about rewarding more points for winning in regulation. I think that deserves more than winning in the extra time. It, it, that I, I actually feel more passionate about that part of it. So, so I, I agree with you, by the way, yeah. that there should be more emphasis placed on winning in regulation. Yeah. yeah. What about Frank? Some of the things we heard yesterday from, from Colin Campbell, um, one minute penalties for cheating on face-offs or just giving the puck to the other team. Like how, how Siri I, look, I'm all for coming together and brainstorming and throwing things against the wall and then dialing it into what's reasonable and realistic, but how realistic would be those types of things? Because I think adding a one minute penalty, like, that kind of changes the de the the fabric or the DNA of hockey. Like to me, that would be like very drastic. Um, even though it's like a little thing, I think it would be kind of drastic. Are those things kind of serious, or is that more just like ideating and and you know thinking about it maybe from fifty thousand feet? That one seemed the most ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, look, they talk about all these things, which I think is the point of getting everyone together. And mm. and by the way, to Johnny's point. They do this in March because you've had the bulk of a season to really dissect things. They have a preliminary GM meeting, a one day thing in Toronto, right on the heels of Hall of Fame in November. And then this is the sort of larger think tank group where you've got, um, you know, an executive committee of six GMs that meet before to help steer it. You've got a bunch of different issues that have popped up throughout the course of a season. And then you've got you know, ideation, what you're talking about, where you could potentially come up with some different ways to, um, to, to accomplish different things. And so here's, here's what I'd say. Um, my sense from, you know, talking to people on Monday with how things played out, lots of intriguing ideas, certainly some stuff to, to think about and noodle on, but ultimately very little ends up getting adopted. And, you know, we have seen some pretty significant changes over the last 10 years since I've been coming to these, you know, mm -hmm. the addition of, of three on three or a change to three on three was a big one. Um, but for the most part, they kind of take input and then step back and think about it. And they typically don't make very many drastic changes. Frank, I'm curious to get inside your brain here. What what's something that you would bring up if you had uh, the floor to, to bring something up for a league change? I mean, my the only thing that I would advocate for is to remove the ability to ice the puck on the PK. Like I the was fact that, the same exact thing. I was I thinking the same that. thing. I I I disagree with you guys. Why so much on? Okay, that. so wait. Let me let me get my point out first. Yeah. So. You're not allowed to ice the puck when you're at even strength. Why would you take a penalty, so commit an infraction, and then be given the ability to do so? And my thing is, we now have an entire generation of youth hockey players that are going to be coming up through the USA hockey system that have been forced to make creative plays with the puck while killing penalties that are going to then get to the higher levels and then all of a sudden... Oh wait, you get a jail get out of jail free card and it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Like these players are all going to have to figure it out as they rise through the levels of of youth hockey in the US. You can figure it out at the NHL level. You can. Yeah, but Frank, and they're not doing that in college. They're not doing it in the USHL. They're not doing it in the NAHL. But they're they not should. Doing, 
And I'm just saying though, so like all the feeder leagues to the NHL aren't and having to now be fair, it's only been three years or four years since this was instituted. All I'm saying is, is having now seen it live with my U18 team and having us be victimized on it, because I got to tell you something we didn't, we, we ended up in the final, you know, like I said, you know, one game away from an opportunity to go to nationals to represent, you know, this entire, you know, Northeast corridor in nationals, right? 12 teams. So we have a, we had good team, good players. None of them could make a play. We would either <laughs> ice the puck or we would flub it trying to do something and it would end up shoved back down our throat, especially this week. You're making my point oh. for me. Yeah, You're making my point for me. What we're trying to do here is create more offense. There's enough offense. More goals. We, no, we there's not. There's, goals. there's always there's always room for more. There is I don't always like room it. for more. More goals. I don't like it. Put your hand down, of... idiot. What do you, what's wrong with you? Put your hand well, down. Well, Vic just made a really good point because the team on the power play can't even ice the puck. Why Why do they have the disadvantage if you're on the power play? Like, imagine being able to, you know, if you're on the power play breakout and you have a guy like Chris Kreider flying down the wing and you want to send the puck, you know, along the end boards and he's going to win that race or, or maybe not even win the race because it could be an icing. Like, why is the team that is on the power play not able to ice the puck but the team that's shorthanded is? That's a really good point. Why does Vic. it always come back to the Rangers? Just, just an example. It could be anyone flying down the wing. You know, just the first guy I thought of. But um, I think heard it's a great what point. Vinny Trocek told me about Johnny. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you at the end, Frank. He kind of, he, he gave you got to tell nice, me now. Yeah, you can say it. I don't nice, shit. He gave me some nice insight to how, how giddy Johnny gets when he's in the locker room talking to guys after practice and, you know, in there high fiving and slapping hands. And, you know, he's, he, I love my apparently job. Johnny. Apparently Johnny gets really comfortable in the locker room. That's that's all I would say. He gets really so comfortable. So I'm I'm not surprised by that. Hockey bro being hockey bro. Is but that a um, <laughs> no, what I, I I just that doesn't surprise me at all. Well, we I don't mean, want to see his DFO credential revoked though. That's what well, we don't want. Hey, at, look, at if that I'm, happens, it's on him. Yeah. Also, Kobe, we can talk about this after because I want to waste Frank's time. Um, but I do want to get into that. But Frank, something that came out that was probably the most popular thing that was talked about yesterday in the meetings was that 10 to 12 player docuseries. Um, and I'm curious on your thoughts because I actually have a really, um, I guess, not deep thought. He's not but... really curious on your thoughts, Frank. He just needs a segue to give his thoughts on this. Well, no, I, I think I okay. think the 10 to 12 players that should be followed shouldn't be necessarily the top guys in the NHL like the McDavid's or McKinnon's. I think it should be maybe those, you know, third, fourth line guys who have a little bit more of the personality that would be fun to be around. It doesn't necessarily have to be the game's brightest stars if they're not going to be as into it as maybe a third or fourth liner would. But I don't know if that's the angle that they want to take with this. I'm curious what you would do if you were picking the players to follow. Uh, so I would agree only up to a certain extent. Like I think you still need star power. Mm -hmm. I think to the real goal of this should be to not just feed the hardcore hockey fan, but really to bring in casuals that don't really watch hockey. That gives them a reason to, you want the star players. And um, the other thing that I would say is I think they had a pretty big failure um, a few years ago when they did the Amazon limited mm -hmm. series with the Leafs where the Leafs had another meltdown and really what we ended up seeing was really quite sanitized. And that was disappointing because apparently there were some significant fireworks that took place behind the scenes that were edited out because the Leafs weren't comfortable and they essentially fought and strong armed their position as being the ultimate executive producers of what went to air that it didn't end up being this truly behind the scenes thing we got something that's a cleaned up version of what should have been a crazy disappointing season for a team that felt like they could win the stanley cup that year mm -hmm. and if you're going to do it that way just don't even waste our time at all and do it just just mail it in and make it as fluffy as you can um because if you're really going to truly talk behind the scenes it should be unvarnished and it should be raw and it should be something that um, 
really actually lifts the curtain on what these players and teams go through. Because yeah. if not, I think it's, it's a really disturbing. ends up being yeah. more or less a joke. Well, mm -hmm. I think hard, hard knocks does a good job of, of finding a balance of giving you some, I'm sure we don't get to see everything on hard knocks, but like they, they put a camera in the meeting with a GM and a head coach talking about personnel and cuts and they may cut away before they say a guy's name, but like, you have an idea of what's coming down, coming down the pike. So look, Frank, I know you got to go. It's 930, 929. Last thing I need to ask you about. Last week, there was some real controversy um, and you were on vacation. So I'm not sure if you saw it. So Vic, do me a favor, put up last week's tweet from Johnny and um, <laughs> let's, let's get his thoughts on what is now being called pasta gate amongst the morning cup of hockey listeners johnny posted a picture on twitter of pasta and then talked about how he puts <laughs> butter and ketchup on pasta and chicken parm ketchup okay <laughs> frank your thoughts go <laughs> what so wait what is that one on the left that's that's uh just a separate picture just pasta the other one with is ketchup and yeah, butter and butter you look at frank's face oh my god that's but the backstory you. the backstory frank is that alex wenberg went from seattle to new york and he put ketchup on pasta but when he got to the rangers the, the guys the guys I'm shit on him joking for, for those doing audio only here frank is literally gagging in his mouth right now you know what colby that is so disappointing first off like what like no 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 <laughs> like that's that's how i would instruct my kids like Straight you don't jail do that. yes do not so pass go. do I... not collect two hundred dollars i the mean best, the you the did best. you had a valiant attempt with your parm i don't know if you sent it to to bucci for for rate my parm There's ketchup on it frank you can't send that <laughs> no to i bucci. know the, the it, that part but the, the actual chicken and cheese like you did a nice job crisping the cheese um thank you the rest of it is a total fail. These pictures are also a couple years old, but I, I feel uh, like I the, the the response needs to be the response from the guy in Happy Gilmore when um, not Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, when he answers the question and then the moderator oh. in the, in, it says, you are awarded no point yeah. at We're no point were you ever even close. Yes. I mean, like, Frank, I got people saying two weeks suspension from Hinge. We've got people who want him suspended from the show. Um, Marie, New York Marie, uh, Marine, I'm sorry, New York Ranger Marine said, a lot of people who used to think I was too hard on Johnny have now completely jumped sides because mm -hmm. of Pasta Gate, because of how disgusted they are with this. I agree coming from may, Johnny. May God have mercy on your soul. And I would say too, if you throw up that pick again, Vic, of uh <laughs> the left side of that pasta, yeah. It, it reminds me of the rice noodles that I get at uh at the local stir fry place. Like what <laughs> what is that? Yeah. That's not a very it's those noodles look really pale too. Like Ketchup? really pale. I Oy. actually if we can, it's Frank, as you know, Colby and I have a have a bet on if the Flyers make the playoffs uh, or not. We have to buy each other dinner. I have the Flyers missing. He has the Flyers making. I'd rather have Colby eat a chicken parm. You're not changing our bet. Up. It'll never happen. <laughs> It'll never happen. I would never bet something that I can't control on <laughs> something that horrifying. Frank, thank you for your time today. I know you're a busy guy. I'll be covering for you again on DFO Live today, and then I know – You'll be back in the saddle with Tyler the rest of the week after that. Good to see a little color on your face. Yeah. Got a little tan from vacation last week. But uh, thanks for coming on today. We really appreciate it. See you guys. You, Have friends. a good one. That was funny. People, you're you're letting people down who generally stick up for you. Yeah, but you know what? I am who I am, and I'm not going to change. I, I, you, I again, I, that's I don't. Good. I don't. Uh, you know what, what do they say? Um. Never change, just continue to progress. But I don't, I don't eat that like in front of other people. 
Like I, I it's usually just like a comfort. So you come meal home at four a.m. Well, that was my no, that was my pregame meal. My my billet mom in Texas would make me chicken parm and pasta and and put ketchup on it. That was my uh. When you played in the North American League. Yeah, uh, you, we can call Mary up right now. She'll tell you. I three thirty chicken parm and pasta with the ketchup. Well, like take us into our t- our Tim's tweet of the night, Johnny, because we might as well we might <laughs> as well stay on on brand here. Yep. So tonight's Tim Horton's tweet of the night. Roll up to win is back for Tim's 60th anniversary. Celebrate our big year with some big prizes an all electric Volkswagen ID4, a sun soaked Hilton getaway, and cash for the daily jackpot of ten thousand dollars. Play today on the Tim's app, Johnny. And, and- what? You need to play this ten thousand dollars. I mean, you will be rolling around New York City like a big deal, wheeling and dealing, taking girls to catch probably three days a week mm-hmm. if you could win this ten thousand dollars from Tim Horton. So I hope you're joining and you're playing um, for these Tim's giveaways. I mean that that's a that's a pretty good prize. Yeah, and then you could take that ten thousand dollars and just fade Vic and turn it into twenty thousand dollars, you know. And then or or you know. maybe maybe you're cruising around in an ID four in New York City, little electric vehicle for you. You get a little plug put in it. You're, I mean, I don't know if I trust you in an electric car. You'll forget yeah, to. Uh, I'm, I'm good with walking in New York. I'm good with walking. Driving in New York is not a. Uh... Not something I, I yeah, love. Yeah, but you drive all the time because you always are going up to Boston to call games. Well, I don't drive through the city. What do you do? You take the train out to Long Island and then you drive from there? Uh, sometimes I'll do that. Other times my brother-in-law will bring the car to Brooklyn because he works 15 minutes away from my apartment and I'll just drive from Brooklyn. But through Brooklyn, you don't have to go through the city, which is nice. Um, but we, do, do we, we didn't even show the tweet. Let's get the tweet up. Let's get the tweet up. Go ahead no, and read it up, Johnny. This, was, this actually was hilarious. I was cracking up. Joe, Joe from Yardley uh said i followed my boy jay lazzy 23 for years would donate an organ for the young man constantly thinking colby cohen was bullying him after the catch-up incident for a kid from long island i stand with colby give him a two-week sussy off hinge <laughs> i i i actually of all the, the the suspensions that people mention i think mm-hmm. that's the most realistic one we can't suspend you from the show because you know <laughs> i i do need you here um but suspending you from dating apps like i feel like that would be two weeks might be a little steep i mean maybe i could reach out to george paros and and get him to weigh in on this a little bit Uh um you know and i do personally like i've got a chance to meet paros over the years he has him and i have the same agent when we were playing um and so he introduced us years back and i get to see him now at big events and whatnot i really personally like george paros like I know a lot of fans like hate the guy and they crush him on social media. But like if you ever had an opportunity to have a beer with him, you may hate his work, but you would like him as a guy like he's a Western Canadian. He's a chill guy. He loves to have a beer like the rest of us. Um, he was a, 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 a brick to play against. Tough as nails. Smart, though, went to Princeton. Like so he's obviously you know, got it up here. Mm -hmm. So that's all I would tell you all hate his work. No problem. But I swear to God, especially like our, our avid listeners and watchers of this show. Like, I feel like we have a lot of old school people that get in on this show. Like that have, you know, we have, we have former armed services people. We've got New York Marine. We've got Jeremiah. Like you guys would love having beers with George Paros. Like he is an awesome guy. Again, hate his work. But he's a, <laughs> he's a solid dude. Like, he really is. So I always get a little allergic to seeing people crush him on social media. And and I've, I've disagreed with them and, and put it out there. But, like, I don't ever attack him personally like a mm. lot of people do. Um, but I just wanted to get that out there because I know we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about player safety today. And, you know, we kind of heard from Frank and, and whatnot about that. I was also thinking, I don't know if he's in the chat today, but maybe uh, back to the, the pasta thing, maybe pizza sports guy can have me in for a, for a parm or something. We can make I a, haven't seen him special. in the chat today, so I yeah. don't think he's here. If he was here, he'd be in the chat. He was up late last night doing an Isles Twitter space. So Tommy uh, T, punishment suggestion. Johnny drinks a 12-ounce bottle of ketchup. Oh, no, oh, never, so never. Um, but can we, can we dive back into this Trocheck thing? Because I want to transfer. I thought that. Paros was from New Jersey or PA. I don't think he is. Vic, can you look up and see where George Paros is from? I know he went to Princeton, went to Princeton yeah. but I didn't think he was from here. But I could be wrong. I thought he was a Western. He he has that chill Western Canadian vibe, but maybe I'm off. Like, 
let's um let's Vic's gonna look it up for us mm -hmm. right now. Um, go ahead. What do you what is it that you're dying to talk about? The, the show check thing. I want a chance to like defend myself a little bit. I mean, bit. you do have to know that like oh, he's from Randolph, New I Jersey. Have, you're I, way off. He's from where? Randolph, New Jersey. Wow. So I, I thank you for the correction. Who was that? Let me see. Uh, who was the correction? Oh, Carousel Vertigo. I literally couldn't have been further off. Yeah, um, you're, you're kind of off native. lately. You said Gensel went to Minnesota last week. What's going from, on? With you, dude? From Minnesota. You from said he Minnesota. went to the University of Minnesota. I know. Shaps, Shaps corrected me on that. Um, yeah. yeah. But but that I feel like the, the Gensel one played Minnesota high school from Minnesota, like, that I feel like is a reasonable mistake. This Paros one went I to mean, Princeton, played for Princeton. That's a strike. I said he played for Princeton, but that's know, a, the difference. That's the a strikeout. I, yeah. That's a major strikeout by me. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's like I struck out and then I fell after yeah. I struck out and yeah. like face planted in the dirt and like cut my eye open. Like that was a that was a bad one. Carousel vertigo. So how many um, beers did you have with him that you don't remember where he's from? <laughs> He just, I got to tell you something. He gives off like that chill Western, like every guy I know from Western Canada is pretty chill. Mm -hmm. Right. And he has that like chill energy. Um, and I honestly just kind of figured like he came through the dub because the WHL makes those absolute beastly tough guys. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, yeah, no, I mean, I knew he went to Princeton. I didn't know he played at Del Barton. Um, that's honestly shocking to me, but also makes sense because that's like an unbelievable yeah. academic institution in North Jersey. Um, so it does make a little bit of sense. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, all right, swing and a miss. I, yeah. That's worse than a minus one. That's probably like a minus three. So you just turned the puck over and they came right down. Scoring. They scored. And now, now I've got the gold jacket for the yeah. rest of the game. Go ahead. Yeah, that's rough. Well, I was just going to ask you more about the Trocheck thing and kind of give my own take on it because, it's it's a weird thing for me, and I don't like. I guess I don't really talk about myself that much in the professional setting on this show. But I was always like, you know, a locker room kind of guy, and being in the locker room when I'm doing a reporting job is definitely a little bit hard for me because I want to be like a little bit more of myself, but I have to be that professional. <laughs> set what New York Marine. You and Braden Schneider are best friends. I could see you being Thunder buddies. <laughs> you talking about you? Oh, me? No, you, you oh. and Braden Schneider, Thunder Buddies. Oh, no, I actually haven't talked to him much. But you know what I mean? Like, like just from my perspective, I know you give me a lot of shit for it with how I am in the locker room, but it's it's definitely a little bit more challenging. And, you know, a lot of the interviews I do are outside of the room, so I have to try to find a way to separate it when I'm inside the room. But, like, that was always my place of comfort. But when I walk into someone else's room, it's weird to, like, not be able to feel that, I guess, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so it's, it's something I definitely struggle with. The guys that I talk to that you talk to and do do <laughs> interviews, they all like you and they all like that you are a hockey player because you yeah. don't ask. Yeah, you ask them dumb shit, but not dumb hockey shit. Like you ask yeah. them dumb personal shit. But when yeah. you actually <laughs> talk hockey with these guys, I think they all appreciate the fact that you do somewhat, you know, know the game. So but I think the dumb um, personal shit's also fun for the fans to hear. Like, I think that's. Yeah, enjoyable. but. But they, they, you know, but not every guy wants to talk about that stuff. So yeah, look, it, they don't have to you, you look, you just got to know. I, I got spies in every room. I know you, you do. just got to know that someone's always watching, Johnny. Someone's always watching. I um, know. Just to answer everybody in the chat right now. Yes, I'll take a dash three on on getting Paros's being so far off geographically. Yeah, but to think that I'm going to eat ketchup noodles as a punishment that, <laughs> Someone is, said that? Like, that would be like me high sticking a guy and getting a 10 game suspension like the punishment does not fit the crime i mean come on mm -hmm. like that's not suspension worthy maybe like a 1500 fine but that's not suspension worthy what johnny has done laps that so let's not confuse punishments here and and make sure that the 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 crime the punishment the crime fits the punishment we got john goyans in the chat I know, I didn't we, saw that. we were we were that. talking <laughs> about john earlier so i don't know if he heard that but yeah um he did say you probably just sit down and put your arm in, around la lafreniere and his stall huh do we do mm -hmm. a lafreniere um a, a, a status update on your boy lafreniere today on the road to 100 he's 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 making his way. He's almost out of the minuses. He's, he's had only a nice, minus goal. Two had a nice goal on Sunday. He did have a nice goal. Yeah. I l listen, being able to one time a puck is such a lost skill amongst really 
young players in the NHL. It's didn't such a lost mention, skill. Didn't you mention uh, something about slap shots? I just think week. slap shots and and one timing the puck. Like I feel like you don't see an emphasis on that from young players anymore because they all play with these really whippy sticks now. Um, because they all want to be able to do all the fun stuff with the puck. And when you play with like a 75 flex stick, it's impossible to take a one-timer, you know, where the puck continues to either go clockwise or counterclockwise. You see a lot of them, you know, end over end. Um, and so well, when you see Lafreniere execute that and you see that he has that club in his bag, I think that that's, you know, that's, that's a, that's a weapon that you just don't see a lot of guys confidently one-timing the puck anymore. You know, especially these really young players, you you just you don't see it. Well, I think one timing the puck and a slap shot are two completely different things, obviously. But it's funny because I was watching. Uh, you know, I, I I told you, Kobe, I couldn't fall asleep till like four a.m. last night. I actually ended up watching like old Ranger games from like the early two thousands. Like I literally watched Mark Messier's last game as a Ranger last night. <laughs> like literally two this morning, I had it on. But um, you know, something you see like a player like Brian Leach, for example, used to come down the left wing and rip a slap shot from the top of the circles and it would go in like that doesn't happen in today's NHL. Like if anything, that's probably a dumb play. If you don't have someone crashing the net for a rebound, like that's just turning the puck over essentially because more well, than it not, depends, it's, it's it not going to go in. Well, it depends who you are, but well, I mean, a, if it's, it's, it's a better play to, to cut back and try to hit the second wave of offense. Well, if it's Bouchard and Edmonton, I, I'll take my chances. If it's Ovechkin, I'll take my chances. I mean, there's a number of guys that can still beat a goalie with a slap shot. You just, again, everybody overhandles the puck now. I saw John chime in on the chat on that. It, it's a, it's just a little bit of a different, you know, skill set. The game has evolved. The game has changed. And all I'm saying is, is you see guys who can still one time the puck. All right, let's forget slap shots for a second. Let's just yeah. talk one timer. Well, that's what I was talking about. The slap those shot. guys who can still execute a one timer, like the one that's Zabinajad can execute a one timer, right? He he can do it as well as almost any Ford, right? Uh, Ovechkin, that's an obvious one. Um, Bouchard, how many goals does Bouchard score from the top of the point in the offensive zone? Because one timers are hard to get in line with to block. They're hard for goaltenders to track. When a goalie's moving from left to right or right to left, they don't have an opportunity to set their feet and square up, right? So it's like kind of a hope play for a goaltender. And you just don't see a lot of guys who can execute it anymore. And the ones who can, there's just more of a premium on them. There really is. Let me put you on the hot seat here. Outside of Ovechkin, who do you say, or who would you say the, the, the next three biggest one-time threats in the NHL? Well, I think Bouchard and Edmonton. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's one of them. Um, I think Alex DeBrinkat, and I no. think probably no way. You're putting DeBrinkat over Pasta. I'm Thompson. not putting him over. You asked me who the threats are. I'm saying De I said, I said DeBrinkat. I think Pasta is right there. Uh -huh. Kucherov can shoot a one timer. Um, so you say T Tage Thompson? He should be on that list yeah. of guys who can do it. I mean, look, every goal Alex DeBrincat has scored for the last three years has been a one-timer from that circle. I watched it in Chicago for, for mm -hmm. almost two seasons. So there, there's there's a group of them, and, you know, they, they can score really well. We've got 29 in Edmonton, dry Leon, sidle. Yeah. He, he's, a, he's a good one, um, obviously. But, again, like, you could probably find a dozen guys, but then there's probably a dozen, and then there's, like, a pretty big gap between, like, that next sort mm -hmm. of – um, Stammer, Stamkos. You don't see it as much anymore, but yeah. he can. Yeah, he had that, him the other night. Put put him in that group. I, mm -hmm. I that's that's a good one that I you know that I forgot about. You know, Hedman can shoot a one timer from the top. Although he's not a flank guy, he's more of a top one timer mm -hmm. where Cooch will fake it into the into the bumper, or or he will give it into the bumper, and then it goes Kucherov, and then one touches out, or maybe it's from the other side with Stamkos. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we mentioned Ovi. But there's just there's just not a lot is my point for, for the amount of players in the NHL versus the amount of guys who can execute that at a, at a high level. It's not a lot. Look, Zabinajad can can take yeah. a one timer. I mean, mm -hmm. he's wired some one timers from distance in his career like he can do it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. Um, just moving on here. We got a lot of games tonight and I know we want to get to Vic's fate of the night. I think we should start calling it now because I mean. Let's be honest, Vic couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat right now. He had uh, 
the Flames money line last night. The Caps go up three nothing, and he's texting us like, "What the hell do I got to do?" <laughs> um, well, but, there's a big slate. There's there's 13 yeah, oh, yeah. games tonight. Um, yeah. You know what? What are the games that you're that you're dialed in on, Johnny? Well, I'll be at the uh, Ranger Winnipeg game, which to me is a big measuring stick game. You know, Rangers against a really strong Western Conference opponent. But you look at Toronto and Philly. To me, the other game that I'm looking at is Carolina and New York. If the Islanders can find a way to beat Carolina, upset them on the on the or another home actually tonight, um, you know they they need something to spark themselves again because their last four couple of games have been atrocious. And you know the Islanders were a team that I said should be in the playoffs. They should jump in over Philly. And if they continue to trend in the way they're trending, there's no shot in hell they're going to make it. So the Islanders and Carolina is one I'm looking at closely. But um, what about yeah. Tampa and Vegas tonight? I mean, <laughs> t- you know Vegas finally had a good win the other night. Tampa seems like Vasilevsky ha- has re-entered the chat um, over the last couple of weeks. It seems like, you know, they've had a couple of really good marquee wins where he's played really well. Um, I-, I think, I mean, that is all the-, the the star power you could ask for in a hockey game, uh, that that Vegas, that Tampa uh, Vegas matchup for sure. Um, looking around, I mean, I would say there's a number of games for teams tonight, like Carolina, New York. You know, New York needs to win. Like, there's a number of games tonight. That. There's a number of games. Sorry, Colorado, this, St. Louis. Is this one of those I things where, where you tune me out for there for 10 no, seconds? No, I heard you. I heard you. I did. <laughs> um, Colorado, St. Louis. St. Louis still thinks they have a chance to get in. They're going to have to beat Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Buffalo and Vancouver. Will Devin Levi play tonight? He, he, he should up. be because uh, UPL played last night. So I so you think you're finally going to see your guy, Devin Levi, who you picked to be rookie of the year this year in the NHL. Yeah, um, G- guess- Gabe in the chat was giving me a lot of shit for it last night on Twitter. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, that was yeah. a, that was a, one of your, your overreaches oh, of the year and it, mm-hmm. and it came right in the, in the beginning. So um, let, let's go to the yeah, Minnesota. I, I, I want to say one thing before you go to Minnesota. I did see a really funny tweet last night. Uh, I, I, and I forgot who, who did it. And I hate when I don't credit the person that made me laugh, but someone tweeted a screenshot of like the devils versus penguins and the red wings versus Columbus and said, is there a possibility that all four teams lose and they play each other? I thought it was pretty funny because those four teams have just not been able to put it together. Like it's been yeah. one massive disappointment for those four. It's it's, it's the battle of disappointments in that yeah. New York. Uh, I'll continue. Sorry. sorry. I just want to New squeeze York that one in there. Program. Yeah. Let's go. Look, You've got Minnesota, who who thinks that um, they're still alive. They they they're they they want to. They're pushing. We all I know think they're John, alive too. We know what John Hines did a couple of weeks ago. So if you think that they're still alive, so you think they're going to catch who Vegas, or you think they're going to no, catch? I think, I've been telling you, I think LA is going to drop. So you think LA is going to drop out of the playoffs? I've been saying that now for weeks. Okay, all right. So Johnny thinks LA. Um, K Waddy says Devin Levi, future hundred point player. Yeah, but but Kobe, oh. if you think about it, Vegas is already tied with LA. So if Vegas, like you know, keeps That's going, gone. they'll they'll jump uh, LA in the Pacific Division. So well, but then Minnesota still has to catch LA as well. No, I know, but I'm saying like that third spot in the Pacific is probably going to be the Golden Knights. All right, and well, LA, look, uh, what? Stay Am with I the wrong? Minnesota game. Let's talk about our Betway bet of the day. Um, Betway is offering an awesome new promotion. You can get a free bet up to $200 if your first bet loses. So basically you're starting with house money. All you got to do, create a new account. We've got the QR code on our screen. You scan it with the, the new account and that's how you will redeem your bonus. So remember, place your bet. If it loses, you'll get a refund of up to $200. I mean, again, who can go wrong? betting with house money. You can continue to use that money to bet on your favorite games, your favorite teams, your favorite sports. And just know the offer is available outside of Ontario. Okay. Only outside of Ontario is this new free $200 bonus. So very generous from our friends at Betway. They sponsor our show. They're offering our listeners all these different opportunities. If you're outside of Ontario, you're playing with house money, which is probably a good thing if you're listening to Johnny, if you're listening to Vic give you vetting advice. It's good to have free money coming back your way because we've seen things haven't been going our way here with the betting. So let's bring in our man, Vic. 
Let's hear what he's got for the Betway bet of the day. He's going to focus on that Minnesota-Anaheim game. That's probably the only reason to watch a Minnesota-Anaheim game is if you got money on it, right? Vic, tell us today, what are you thinking? I need to ask Betway for uh, what if you lose 19 bets in a row? <laughs> <laughs> can, can also, I get no Jeremiah an apology. I do. Well, no, Jeremiah is my buddy. I tune into his shows when he's on Twitter as well. Jeremiah, Jeremiah is my guy. Yeah. Um, he did, right. Jeremiah, he did text me the other night when he was watching your show and he was like, you got to get in here. I was, I think I was, had a game that our team had a game that night. So I wasn't able to come in, but he was giving you some praise in our group chat. I can confirm that. Jeremiah is my guy. All right. Uh, moving on to the Betway fate of the day. All right. <laughs> let's go. Uh, we're on. Uh, I'm with Johnny here. I think Minnesota could take a run at uh, LA here. Anaheim's lost six in a row. We're going to take Minnesota to win in regulation to get the juice down a little bit here. Uh, minus 135. Minnesota over Anaheim. They need to win. They want to stay in the playoff race. Anaheim stinks. They've stunk all year. <laughs> And uh, that's my bet way bet of the day. Hopefully this time it hits Jeremiah. Let me know if you like it. Besides, All right. So besides the uh, friend of the show, Frank Vetrano. We, we will see how our bet way bet of the day goes. You can get that free $200 reimbursement. If you don't win, you might as well throw 200 on Minnesota tonight, because if you lose it's free money, right? So um, you've got that great offer from Betway. Please bet responsibly. As always, you got to be 19. Don't forget about that. Outside of Ontario is the only place you can get that bonus. Uh, sorry if you live in Ontario. There's always good stuff for you as well. Um, let's hope we can get on a little bit of a streak here with betting. We'd like to see our listeners make a little bit of money. I mean, yeah. I think I think that would be great. And maybe you are going to make money by fading our guy Vic, because that seems to be the popular play right now, Johnny. I want to address Chef Richard in the chat because he said he's a Winnipeg guy. Let's let's wager on the game tonight. If New York wins, I'll try ketchup noodles. If the Jets win, you wear a Jets jersey tomorrow morning. I don't have a Jets jersey, but if there's some sort of alternative that we can come up with, I would love, love. To That's take a that big back. boy matchup tonight. Yeah. I mean, I know generally speaking, when you're at the Garden, I try to watch the other games, so yeah. we have more of a wider. I shoot into the West Coast college, games when I get but, home though. It's going to be hard to not watch, um, you know, New York and Winnipeg because look, that could be a Stanley Cup preview. I mean, you know, they're not necessarily the favorite on either side right now, but it would not shock me to see those two teams competing for a Stanley Cup um, with the way that those two teams are built. Yeah, and the goaltending too, right? This is Sturkin versus Hellebuck, two of the best goalies in the NHL right now. If if you ask me. If you look at it the past like six weeks, this is the the one and two matchup as far as goaltending goes. So um, I'm really excited to see these two go at it. I'm going to try to talk to Connor Hallibuck today. I'm actually heading to the Winnipeg Jets morning skate after the show is done. So um, Chef Richard, actually, if you want to ask a question for me to ask Connor Hallibuck, I'd love to get a you know a Winnipeg Jet fan perspective on, on what I should ask him. I think it's always cool to to hear what the pulse of the fan base has to say um, about a team, but. Um, yeah, I think that that is the game to watch tonight, I think. And I don't know if that's a biased take. Um, no, I, I think that's look, you know, there's plenty of other games going on tonight. As we said, it's a 13 game slate, but it, you want to see two big boys play against each other. Like those are that that's your matchup right there. Um, you know, plenty of other things going on. Big E says Flyers plus one and a half. They're going to seek vengeance for getting thrashed by the Leafs. Big E, I hope you're right here. Because let me just say this about the Flyers. I'm worried about my bet with Johnny. I'm, I'm, for the first time, I feel like they really are on life support. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like they're hanging on and like they're fine. They're down to one hand on the side of the mountain, keeping them on. Um, because, you know, I, like it's not looking good right now. And, and Johan Norden in the chat just said, do you think there's any truth? to the rumors that Couturier might be a healthy scratch tonight. Um, I do think there's there's truth to those rumors. Uh, I I but do why? not agree with this decision. Yeah, why? I, because, look, there's been a lot of back and forth between Torts and, and Sean Couturier right now where 
you know, I don't think Torts is happy with the way he's playing, the effort that he's giving. His ice time has become limited. He's kind of gotten pushed down to the fourth line. Um, I, I don't like this decision, though. And, like, I will say this. I, I've come around to the fact that, like, when Torts is making a move, he knows what he's doing. Like, whether I agree or not, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt on most things because every lever and button that he's pushed has been executed. This is one that if it happens, I'm not sure about. That's your captain. Um, that's your your got to be your number one setter in the locker room of your culture. That's mm-hmm. a guy who's on a long-term contract. He's been a flyer since the day he came out of the QMJHL. It's a guy that I know personally, and I know what kind of guy he is, and I know what he means to his teammates. This is one where I'm I'm parting ways with John Tortorella does, if, if this is to happen. We will definitely talk about it tomorrow yeah. and get more into this decision tomorrow if it does happen. Um, but I, I'm 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 not liking what I'm seeing with with this so far, Johnny. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. And I also actually wanted to jump back a second and, and say what Tommy T said in the chat because we actually talked about this as well. Uh, Tommy T said, "Can we add an additional thirty seconds to Vic's segment in which the chat suggests a winner for Vic?" Which I think we're uh, we're all in favor of. So we maybe- we are we are thinking about you know ways to to incorporate you guys all into the betting segment. Um, you know, look, you know, Betway is our presenting sponsor. You know, you see them on the screen the entire show. Um, they're they're a great partner to the network. Um, they're involved in in a bunch of different things that we do. So we just kind of have to figure out how to address it. Maybe it's something where if if you're able to get in the chat, you know, right off the top and start laying in your bets, like literally the minute the show yeah. starts. That way we can we can find it on Betway and we can get the little graphic ready by the end of the show. It's definitely something that we're open to doing. I, I think Vic is only doing. Vic is a better. He does bet on sports. Um, he actually you gotta give him wins. credit. He hit a big seven game parlay on Sunday. He, he wins a lot. Like he sends us screenshots and he wins a lot. It's he just, just crumbles whatever, under pressure, just like his for, favorite Toronto Maple Leafs. Exactly. On this show, he 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 seems to miss a little bit more. Um, <laughs> so we're we're definitely talking about ways to kind of get you guys involved in that. Maybe one week. You know, we have Jeremiah picking one week, Tommy T, like our regulars, like maybe you, we get you picking is, is, is for a whole week of our show and we kind of rotate or something like that. But we are, we are discussing that stuff. So again, if you have good ideas for us, I say this all the time, get into Johnny's DMs on Twitter um, <laughs> because he checks them. I really don't see DMs all that often. I, I, I see my mentions, but, but not so much the, the, the DMs. So we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You can also get into Vic's DMS. He checks his DMS obviously as well. Um, so we're, uh, we're all for that. Someone said Connor Bedard rookie of the year. Yeah. I think he, you know, I, I ganja man for 20 said that <laughs> I, I don't think anybody can argue that at this point. I think, you know, when he came back from his injury, I made the point that I thought him and Faber were neck and neck based on the fact that Bedard didn't play for two months. I think Connor Bedard has then re-separated himself from Faber. I think Faber will will come in second um, in the voting for that award. But um, good for Bedard for for you know breathing some life back into the Chicago Blackhawks that were lifeless for for most of the season. So Johnny, final thoughts. Um, that was, that was a fun show today, huh? That was that was fun. Um, you know, I don't know if you it. can hear Oliver squeaking a toy in the background right no. now. Can you hear that? No, no, you're God, good. These mics, these mics are great. They don't pick up a lot of sound. Like Sloan could be yelling upstairs. I got Oliver cruising around down in the office squeaking his toys, but nothing's getting picked up. I like that. Yeah. Um, but just want to thank Frank again. And I don't want to drag the show out too long because the last time I had to go to a morning skate and we were on the show, I actually ended up being late and I missed the whole thing. So, um, yeah, I, I think today's show is awesome. We're really looking forward to tomorrow. We got so many games on tonight. So tomorrow, I'm sure we'll get into a lot of that. Uh, no, I don't think we have a guest plan for this week, right? Outside of today's show with Frank. Not yet. We'll see. You know, yeah. let's, let's see. Maybe we'll try to swing someone for Thursday. Mm-hmm. Our schedule could get a little. Um, you know, we, we may have some special editions coming up around the frozen Four, the NCAA tournament. I'll be doing the, the frozen or the NCAA tournament selection show for ESPN on Sunday. Oh, wow. Um, and then, you know, heading off to a regional. So 
I'll probably be doing some, some shows from the hotel. Our, I might have someone sitting in for me one day next week. We'll, we'll figure some of that stuff out. But um, stay with us on social media. Um, keep an eye, especially on Johnny's Twitter. He, he's usually the, the main tweeter for us or the DFO Twitter account. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the DFO YouTube. That's where we put out the most content. Um, so, so get in on that. And otherwise, good job today, Vic. <laughs> Hopefully your vet, your your bet's gonna hit. Johnny, have fun at uh, Rangers morning skate. Uh, say hi to your BFF. Tell Alexi Lafreniere it's your birthday. Maybe he'll I'm give you. I'm going to Winnipeg. I'm going to Winnipeg. Not, maybe not, not Lafreniere Rangers. will give you like a game used like sock or something, like something he wears under his skate. Maybe he'll sign it, like a tube sock. I I'm dapping up Alex it. Wenberg right away about the ketchup on pasta. I don't well. know what you'll do with it. If Lafreniere gives you a tube sock, we'll leave that to the imagination. Shut but up. maybe <laughs> maybe he'll sign it for you for your birthday. I don't know. But anyways, thanks to everyone in the chat. We love the energy. We love the suggestions. We love that you guys bring topics. We'll get more into some of this stuff tomorrow. We'll see what Tortorella does. We'll let you know about a guest for Thursday. Um, maybe we try to get on Macklin Celebrini. That's kind of... The hockey East championships are this week. Yeah. You know, he's getting all these new awards, although he's a pretty shy and quiet kid, but I can reach out. Um, good job today, Vic, and we will see everybody tomorrow. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli. Fantasy updates from Brock Sagan and a daily live show at noon Eastern Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.